Now the third situation can be when they are unknown. Okay. And but they are unequal. So sigma 1 square is not equal to sigma 2 square, but it is unknown to you. So before going into that, we need to see two lemmas which would be helpful in finding out and proving the results later on. So the first lemma over here says that if you have a sequence of random variables, then the variance of the sample variance, okay, so sample is S squares your sample variance, this would be twice of sigma raised to the power 4 divided by n minus 1. So let us see how we can prove this. Here what we are doing is, we have to prove basically that variance of S square will be twice of sigma raised to the power 4 over n minus 1. Recall that in the last week, what we have seen is that n minus 1 times s square over sigma square follows chi square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, if you suppose this as u, that u is this random variable, so if u follows chi square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, then we know that for chi square, expectation of u would be same as the degrees of freedom, but the variance of this chi square is twice of n degrees of freedom. Okay. Now let us find out variance of u. When you find out variance of u, it means that if you are finding out at a substitute the value over here, so n minus one times s square over sigma square. This has to come out as 2 twice of n minus 1 by this logic, right? Now let us try to simplify this left hand side. n minus 1 and sigma square, these are constants, and we know that variance of ax, if x is a random variable, this would be a square times variance of x. So n minus 1 s square over sigma raised to power 4, variance of s square would be twice of n minus 1. Now n minus 1 and n minus 1 would cancel out. Okay. So variance of s square that is sample variance is nothing but twice raised to power twice of sigma raised to power 4 and n minus 1. So this is what we wanted to prove. Okay. So this is our first lemma. Now we will move on to the second lemma. So now we come to our second lemma which says that beta hat times of sigma 1 square over n1. So this quantity over here, this is going to follow your chi square distribution. With these many degrees of freedom which is defined in this way. So now let us see what does it mean. Here we are basically going to use this approximation which says that if you have beta times this quantity over here, then it will follow chi square with beta degrees of freedom. Okay? So if you just look at this, this is basically inverse is there. So you can take it in the denominator of right. Now if you have suppose we denote this random variable by v. Okay. If we denote this by v then it shows that if v is following chi square distribution with beta degrees of freedom, then what will happen to the variance? Variance of v will be twice of beta as we have seen this now. So we let us apply this variance term on this v. Okay. So if you see over here, so we have defined v as this, right, and if v follows this, then you would expect that variance of this quantity would be same as variance of this, right. So basically we are trying to prove variance of v is twice beta, right. Now before finding out variance of v, you can see from these steps that instead of v, you can just substitute this value that is beta. this thing over here, fine, this is what we have defined as v just now. Now if you see, 
Here beta is a constant that would go outside the variance, so it will become squared. Okay. So this term over here is a square. Now similarly, this inverse term over here, this is also constant, so this will become square because variance of ax plus b, suppose if we have, then it would be a square times variance of x. Right? And now you are left with variance of, so you have variance of s1 square over n1 plus s2 square over n2. Okay? You can take variance inside because these two are independent. So here it would be variance of s1 square over n1 square plus variance of s2 square over n2 square. Right? So same thing you are getting over here. Fine. Now we have just now seen in your first lemma what is variance of sample variance, right? S square. So that is basically so variance of S square. Variance of S square we have just now seen that it would be twice sigma raised to power four over n minus one. So for S one square it will be sigma one, and here you would have n one. Right, and for S2 square, we would have so all the ones will be replaced by 2s. So, here you see that we are writing so n1 square is already there. So, this quantity over here, this is basically variance of S1 square, and this is the variance of S2 square, okay, which is not written over here. Fine. So let me just clean it up a bit so that it, I can explain it further. Here if you see this beta would cancel out with this one, right? So you will have this side, only one beta would be there. And this these twos would get cancelled from this two. So if you have to find out beta, so you can take this term on the left hand side. So beta would be so here you would have sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 whole square divided by this, this term would come in the denominator. Right? So this would be sigma 1 raised to the power 4 n1 minus 1 n2 square n1 square sorry plus sigma 2 raised to the power 4 over n2 minus 1 n2 square. Same thing can be seen from here that if you solve this, you can see that this is what I have written sigma 1 square by n1. The numerator is same and the denominator you get this. Okay. Now, since these two variances are unknown to us, it means that we have to replace it with their corresponding estimates. So, we know that we can estimate your population variance with your sample variance. So, instead of this, Everywhere you are replacing sigma 1 square by s1 square and sigma 2 square by s2 square. So here you get s1 square over n1 plus s2 square over n2 and likewise. Okay. And you also see that this basically beta hat times of this is following your chi square distribution with the beta hat degrees of t. So you are replacing basically the approximation that you had earlier. So in that you are replacing beta with the estimate of beta that is beta hat. Okay. So now this is the result that we have and we will now use it to prove our next theorem which says that if the two variances are unequal that is sigma 1 square is not equal to sigma 2 square but both are unknown to us. Right? The moment we see unknown, it should click to you that sample variances will come into picture and the distribution would no longer be following your normal distribution but rather it would be replaced by t distribution with certain degrees of freedom. As we have seen for these single sample problems also. 
So here we are looking at two sample problems and likewise it could be generalized it for more number of samples as well. Okay. So if you are given this information that independent samples of size n1 and n2 are drawn from two populations with means mu1 and mu2 and their corresponding standard deviations are such n square and n square, then this quantity over here, this is going to follow t distribution with beta degrees of freedom, beta hat, where beta hat is what we have just defined in the lemma. Okay, the so same thing is coming here. Now, in order to prove this, let us first denote this term as t. Some t is this random variable. Whenever you have to prove that a random variable, the distribution of a random variable is t, we know that how the t distribution can be generated. T distribution arises basically if you have a standard normal variate, okay, and you have another random variable which is following chi square, which suppose r degrees of freedom, then t basically if you define z over square root of v by r, then this will follow t distribution with r degrees of freedom. This is the common understanding that we have. Now, we are given the random variable t in this form. So, we would like to rewrite it such that we get a term in this way that in the numerator you have the standard normal variable. Whereas in the denominator you have a chi square random variable with these degrees of freedom, and if we are able to write this random variable over here in this form, then our job will be done. Okay, so let us see how do we prove that. So we begin with this t over here. Okay, so this is t. This is the same thing that we already have just now. We have seen this is the one that we are interested in. And we have, you see over here, we have multiplied and divided by the same quantity over here. Okay, so it does not impact the original uh, term that we have. Now, if you rearrange the terms, what you can see from here that this sigma 1 square over n1, so this one over here, one can come in the denominator and you can write it as divided by under root of this term, right? So this is one and the same thing, okay? Now, we know from the first result that this is going to follow your standard normal distribution because in the first case, we have seen that x1 bar minus x2 bar, this would be following normal the means would be mu1 minus mu2 and variance would be sigma1 square over n1 plus sigma2 square by n2. And when you standardize it, this would basically be the same thing that is z over here. Right? This minus mu1 minus mu2 and divided by square. Okay? So this is your standard normal variant. Okay? You need to add over here. Now we have to focus on this part. So, we have got a standard normal variate as we wanted over here. Right? So, this thing is done. We are interested in this chi square now. So, let us see how we can obtain that. So, in order to obtain for chi square, if you focus on this term over here, we have this is basically what you can write it. So square root of these two, this is basically, you can write, you can take this as the inverse in the numerator, like this, right, and you are multiplying and dividing by beta hat. And if you can recall, we have from the second lemma, that this term is basically, we are denoting it by v, and we are denoting, it, dividing it by the corresponding degrees of freedom. Because from the second lemma, it said that v, if v is this quantity, it will follow chi square with beta hat degrees of freedom that we have defined in the first slide of this theorem. So basically, now what we have is that z is already there. If you see, 
this is standard normal variate over here, this part. Let me use some other color over here. So this thing over here, this is your standard normal variate Z and you have divided by this quantity over here which is basically your chi square with beta hat degrees of freedom. This basically moves your result. Okay. Now, note that usually whenever sigma 1 and sigma 2 are unknown, we estimate them using S1 and S2. They are corresponding sample variances or the sample standard deviations as we have done earlier. Now, if your S1 over S2 is between 0.5 to 2, right, then we, you can assume that the two variances are equal. So, this is basically a rule of thumb and we say that if it is following this criteria, then we can assume that sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square, these are approximately same. And if that is the case, then instead of dealing with separate standard deviations or standard sample, this one S1 square and S2 square separately, you can estimate it estimate the common variance sigma square using pooled standard deviation and pooled standard deviation basically nothing but you can see that it is the weighted average of the individual sample variances okay so you have s1 square and s2 square now in cases where you can find that okay this is happening that is sigma 1 square is same as nearly same as sigma 2 square then instead of dealing with them separately you can just directly assume that they are same as sigma square and you can estimate it with this pooled sample variance which is basically this pooled sample variance which is this. So S1 square and S2 square. We know that for both of them we have these as the corresponding degrees of freedom, right? So we are giving these as the weights and for this one we have n2 minus 1 s2 right because sample variance follow chi square with n1 n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So with that same logic your pool standard deviation could be very well defined as n1 minus 1 s square right so weighted average in this way. Because weighted average is what if your weights are suppose w1 and w2 and your random variables are x1 and x2. So, weighted average would be W1 X1 plus W2 X2 divided by the total weight. In this case, the total weight would be N1 minus 1 plus N2 minus 1, which is essentially N1 plus N2 minus 2. Okay. So, the same thing we are using. This is basically your weighted average. Now, with this, you can again find the proof for this. In this situation we assume that the two variances are equal and sigma square is unknown to us. If sigma square is unknown and these are equal which means that first of all sample variance will come into picture but instead of dealing with them as individual sample variances we can also use your pooled sample variance. Okay? That is SP. So, if you have independent samples of size N1 and N2 coming from a population with means mu1 and mu2 and variances as S1 square and S2 square, then you can see that this quantity over here, this would follow P distribution with N1 plus N2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. Now, again, as we have seen in the previous example, Again, a t distribution can be obtained if you have a standard normal variate and a chi square random variable. Right? So, let us denote this term over here as t. Okay? And try to rewrite it such that we get a standard normal variate and divided by square root of this thing. Okay? So, in order to prove this, you can see that t is this, okay? 
एक्स वन बार माइनस एक्स टू बार माइनस म्यू वन माइनस म्यू टू एस टू दैट इज टू स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन वन ओवर एन वन प्लस वन ओवर एन टू नाउ यू कैन सब्सिट्यूट दी वैल्यू ऑफ दी पुल स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन दैट इज स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन वन वेरियड एवरेज ऑफ दिस एंड वी आर वॉट वी आर डूइंग वी आर मल्टीप्लाइंग एंड डिवाइडिंग बाई सिग्मा ओके बिकॉज वी नीड टू री अरेज दी टर्म्स फाइव नाउ what we can do is that we can take this sigma and this term over here okay so this can still remain in the denominator and we would write divided by this term over here and this entire thing that we have so this thing that we have it can also be written as divided and this thing comes over here okay Into one over n one plus same thing. Okay, as it is, we have done over here. Here you can see that we get one sigma square in this. So we we try to utilize the information that we have gained so far because we know that n one minus one s one square by sigma square is going to follow chi square with n one minus one degrees of freedom. So since we just now have n1 minus 1 s square and we need to have an extra term in the denominator we need to multiply and divide by sigma okay so now when you rearrange the terms you would get sigma square and sigma square on both the sides and this one would be total degrees of freedom okay You can see it more clearly. Okay. Now, if you look over here, this is the term, which is basically your standard normal variant, right? Again, which is coming from the second theorem, where sigma one square and sigma two square. Is same as sigma. They are known, but this is it. In that case, your normal distribution would be there, but sigma times of this would be there. Okay. So the second result said that x1 bar minus x2 bar follows normal with mu mu1 minus mu2 and sigma. Well, or you can have because if you are writing a standard deviation. So let me just write the variance only. So it would be simply sigma square one over n one plus one over n two. So since this is the variance, when you take the standard error, it would be sigma times square root of this one. Now if you look at this side, what is happening? We have seen that. This is a chi-square random variable. This is also a chi-square random variable. And if you have two chi-square random variables which are independent, then their sum would also be chi-square again, and their degrees of freedom would be added. Okay. So here this would following. Suppose this is u1. So this one would be following chi-square with n1 minus 1 degrees of freedom. And if this is u2. This will be following chi square with n two minus one degrees of freedom. So u one plus u u is u one plus u two. This one would be following chi square with n one plus n two minus one minus two. Sorry, minus two degrees of freedom. Okay, so let us see that. So we know that z is this. And you would follow this distribution because individually these two are independent, and it is one is chi square n minus one, and the other one is chi square n minus two. So now you have in the numerator is z, and in the denominator you have u divided by the degree corresponding degrees of freedom. So it will follow the distribution with n one plus n two minus two degrees of freedom. If you have find out the full standard deviation, then suppose it is given that the quality of light bulbs manufactured by a company in two separate facilities, plant A and plant B, and a testing procedure is carried out. The recorded data includes the lifetime of the bulbs. Okay, 
So these are given to the plantae and plantae. If you have to find out the full standard deviation, that is SP, you need to first check whether their corresponding sample variances are same or not, right? So you have S1 square and S2 square. From this data set, you can find S1 square for this one corresponding to this one and S2 square would correspond to this one, right? Now if you find out that S1 square over S2 square falls somewhere between 0.5 and 2, then you can assume that the two population variances were approximately same. And instead of using in the separate S1 square and S2 square, you can just use this S2 square. That is full standard full variance, sample variance. Okay. So in this, if you see, if you see over here, the sample mean, so you can calculate these values. So sample mean comes out to be 2.39 and variance come out to be this. Similarly, when you calculate the standard deviation, it comes out to be this. And here you see that the ratio is nothing but it is 0 0.909. So, in this case, since the ratio is between 0.5 and 2, you can say that we can use the two variances are nearly equal and we can use our last theorem which says that sp square the full variance would be this. Okay. So we have seen basically four different cases where we are focusing on the difference of sample means and we mainly emphasize on whether the two samples that we have been taken are independent. Okay, so we have seen situations when variances are equal, known to us or unknown. Likewise, if they are unequal, then what is the situation? So we have seen four different cases.